Welcome, we're continuing to work through Daniel 11, and in this video we'll be covering verse 20. In our previous video, we discussed the defeat of Antiochus III at the Battle of Magnesia at the hand of the Roman general Lucius Cornelius Scipio. This defeat resulted in the Treaty of Apamea, which was a humiliating treaty Rome imposed upon Antiochus III. The conditions of the treaty were that the Seleucid Empire must scale down their army, abandon territory, provide Rome 20 hostages, and finally pay tribute to Rome. In our last video, we discussed how Antiochus agrees to this treaty, and one of the 20 hostages that he sends to Rome is his youngest son, Antiochus IV. In this video, we'll be really focusing on the tribute Rome imposes upon the Seleucids. Polybius, in his writings, mentions this tribute, quote, Antiochus shall pay to the Romans 12,000 talents a year, the talent not to weigh less than 80 Roman pounds, end quote. Now, this continued tribute that the Seleucids must provide Rome has a serious impact upon them, which we'll see in this video. Now, with all this background information, let's dive in to verse 20, which reads, Then shall arise in his place one who shall send an official for the glory of the kingdom, but within a few days he shall be broken, though not in anger or in battle. End quote. So the text begins by stating that then shall arise in his place. This is referring to the fact that after the death of Antiochus III, he is succeeded by his son, Seleucus IV. So Seleucus IV is now the king of the Seleucid Empire. We continue to read in verse 20 that Seleucus IV will send an official for the glory of the kingdom. So who is this official that Seleucus sends out? Well, this is referring to his finance minister, a man by the name of Heliodorus. Golden Gay, in his commentary, writes the following, quote, So Lucas IV was an unfortunate and unpopular ruler, whose main concern had to be paying the tribute imposed on his father, end quote. So this is the tribute I spoke of before, and Seleucus has to constantly find money to pay off the Romans. So what Seleucus does is he sends his finance minister, Heliodorus, to go throughout the kingdom to gather money for him. As we continue to read in Golden Gate, quote, The oppressor he sent round in this connection was his finance minister, Heliodorus, whose acts included attempting to pillage the treasury of the temple at Jerusalem. End quote. Newsom gives us more detail on this event, writing, quote, Antiochus III was succeeded by his son, Seleucus IV. Of the events of his reign, the author of Daniel alludes to an episode narrated more fully, though in legendary form, in 2 Maccabees 3. According to that account, Simon, a jealous rival of the high priest Onias III, reported to Seleucid officials that the Jerusalem temple was filled with treasure. Seleucus so sent his chief minister Heliodorus to confiscate these funds, but he was foiled in the attempt. According to 2 Maccabees, the temple was defended by angelic figures who beat Heliodorus senseless. End quote. So let's summarize what we've been told here. So Lucas IV is told that the temple in Jerusalem is filled with money, which he needs to pay off the Romans. So he sends his official, Heliodorus, to steal this money. But according to the account found in 2 Maccabees, an angel prevents this from happening. As Newsom writes here, the temple was defended by angelic figures who beat Heliodorus senseless. End quote. With all this background information, let's read verse 20 again, and hopefully now it makes a bit more sense. Quote, Then shall arise in his place, this is referring to Seleucus IV, one who shall send an official for the glory of the kingdom, this is referring to Heliodorus. But within a few days he, Heliodorus, shall be broken, though not in anger or in battle. So when it says, though not in anger or in battle, this is alluding to this supernatural occurrence in the temple in which Heliodorus is defeated by an angel. Now, whether this literally happened or not is besides the point, as Newsom writes. Presumably, early readers of Daniel 11 would have been aware of these events and legend, though the author does not elaborate. End quote. So it's only important that this legend was known by the readers of Daniel, not that it actually happened. Now, the most famous depiction of Heliodorus being beaten up by angels for attempting to rob the temple in Jerusalem was painted by Raphael in the 16th century and is found in the Vatican. As you can see here, it is a painting of the Jerusalem temple, and in the corner here, you have Heliodorus spilling the stolen money as he's being attacked by angelic figures. 
The next thing we now need to analyze are the sources we have for this event. As mentioned before, we have the account found in 2nd Maccabees 3, but we also have a stella from this time period, which is known as the Heliodorus Stella. And while it doesn't speak of any supernatural occurrences, or even mention the Jerusalem Temple, it does shed some important light on this event. So let's now spend some time talking about this Heliodorus Stella. Here is a summary of the Stella found in the Oxford Handbook of the Writings of the Hebrew Bible. Quote, the so-called Heliodorus Stella of 178 BCE, which was only recently discovered, sheds some light on the account. The Stella is a correspondence between King Seleucus IV and his minister Heliodorus regarding the financial affairs of the temples in the Seleucid provincial areas of Phoenicia and Syria. Judea would have fallen in the latter category, though it and its temple at Jerusalem are never explicitly mentioned in the inscription. Heliodorus is told to inspect the temples to assure that they are suited to the needs of the population and their gods." End quote. So this stella records a correspondence between Seleucus IV and Heliodorus, and Heliodorus is told to go around and check on all the temples found in the empire. Let's now read the stella for ourselves. Quote, King Seleucus to Heliodorus, his brother's greetings. Taking the utmost consideration for the safety of our subjects, and thinking it to be of the greatest good for the affairs of our realm when those living in our kingdom manage their lives without fear, and at the same time realizing that nothing can enjoy its fitting prosperity without the goodwill of the gods. From the outset, we have made it our concern to ensure that the sanctuaries founded in the other satrapies receive the traditional honors with the care befitting them. End quote. So in the text, take note that Seleucus is asking Heliodorus to take care of the sanctuaries, which is another word for the temples that are found throughout the empire. And Heliodorus is to ensure that the temples receive their traditional honors befitting them. Now, some scholars believe that Seleucus in this inscription is lying. What he's actually asking Heliodorus to do is to go around and steal from all these temples. But obviously, he doesn't want to come out and just say that. As Carter notes, quote, Following Cotton and Worley, the Stella's concern with taking care of these sanctuaries seems to be a euphemism that masks the task of exercising close control in the interests of the royal administration over the assets, revenues, and liabilities of the sanctuaries. Scott notes that euphemisms are a part of the imperial repertoire to conceal acts of aggressive power. End quote. So it seems that Seleucus is asking Heliodorus to go around and plunder the temples in his empire. So while the Heliodorus Stella is not a true source for this account, as it doesn't even mention the Jerusalem temple, it still does lend credence to the story, as it does seem plausible that Heliodorus tried to rob the Jerusalem temple. Now let's move on to the true source for this account, which is found in 2 Maccabees 3. Let's give it a read. Quote, when Onias was high priest in Jerusalem, the holy city enjoyed peace and prosperity, and its laws were strictly obeyed because he was devout and hated evil. The kings of Syria and Egypt honored the temple and presented it with expensive gifts. And King Seleucus, ruler of all Asia, even used to pay the costs of the temple sacrifices from the revenues he collected. But a man by the name of Simon, of the tribe of Benjamin, the chief administrative official of the temple, lost an argument he had with Onias over the regulations governing the city market. At this time, Apollonius, son of Thraeus, was the governor of Greater Syria. Simon went to him and said that there was so much money in the temple treasury that it could not be counted, and since the money was not needed for sacrifices, it might as well be placed under the king's control. When Apollonius met with the king, he told him about the money, and the king ordered Heliodorus, his chief minister, to get it for him. Heliodorus set out at once on his mission, but he claimed that he was only making a tour of inspection of the cities of Greater Syria. After he arrived in Jerusalem and had been warmly received by the high priest, he explained the real reason for his visit, and asked if what he had been told was true. 
While everyone was begging the Lord Almighty to protect the money that had been entrusted to his care, Heliodorus went on with his plan. But at the very moment that he and his bodyguards arrived at the treasury, the Lord of all supernatural powers caused a vision to appear that everyone who had dared to enter with Heliodorus was panic-stricken and weak with fear at this display of the Lord's power. In the vision, they saw a horse and a rider. The horse had a richly decorated bridle, and its rider, dressed in gold armor, was frightening. Suddenly, the horse rushed at Heliodorus, then reared up and struck at him with its hooves. Heliodorus also saw two unusually strong and handsome young men, wearing very fine clothes. They stood on either side of him and beat him unmercifully. He immediately fell to the ground unconscious, and his men put him on a stretcher and carried him out. Only a moment earlier, this man had entered the treasury with a large group of men, including all his bodyguards, but now he was being carried away helpless. So they all openly acknowledged the mighty power of God." End quote. So having now read this account, the line in verse 20 of Daniel chapter 11, that this official shall be broken though not in anger or in battle, is most likely referring to the supernatural beating Heliodorus received for attempting to plunder the temple. And again, let me reiterate that whether or not this actually happened is beside the point. As Newsom writes, presumably early readers of Daniel 11 would have been aware of these events and legends. And with all of this being said, hopefully you now feel you understand verse 20 of Daniel 11. As always, if you're enjoying these videos, your support would be greatly appreciated. So please consider supporting me on Patreon. Find the link in the description below. If donating isn't something you're able to do, it's still tremendously helpful if you hit that like button and leave a comment. And finally, make sure you are subscribed to get my next video. Thank you for watching all the way until the end. And as always, I will see you in the next one.